So the world of smartphones continues to expand. In this particular case, I'm pretty sure you have not seen this setup in front of me. This is a system. It's not just a smartphone. It's from a company called Nuance, and the product is called the Neo. See, the thing about the Neo device is the fact that it can be completely customized visually. But all these other boxes represent various looks that you can give to the device. Smooth black suede gray, two-tone dark wood, two-tone natural wood, smooth khaki, suede gray, suede white. Now this device is pretty much exclusively available in Japan right now. That's why I'm pretty sure this is probably your first exposure to it. All right, so let's slide these accessories to the side for a minute and take a peek at the main device, okay? The whole packaging and branding is very unique. Okay, look at this unboxing experience, whoa. All right, so it's downloading an update right now, but I'm gonna check out the other items in the package here. So this is a USB type C to traditional USB. It's a braided cable. That's pretty nice. So this thing is booted up now. I ran the updates. There were like about 7,000 updates. Now, the first thing that strikes me is how much this reminds me of that Nokia device, the Lumia. It was also a Windows phone. Very similar design with the, the flat top and bottom and then the curve on the side. It's a comfy phone to hold. Anyway, this is the stock configuration that's on here right now. It's like a black plastic. It's no fun. It's very straightforward. The fun stuff is over here, the customization. But I should go over some specs with you before we get into that. Quick charge, USB type C. It has a big battery. It has a 3450 milliamp hour battery and it can recharge up to 70% within one hour through quick charge. Okay, that's cool. 32 gigs of storage stock, but a micro SD card slot for expansion. The camera is made by Sony and it's backside illuminated. That's an F2 lens on the back with a 28 millimeter field of view. The front one is eight megapixels. It's a 24 millimeter lens and F2.2 bands. We should show them this because it is a Japanese phone. And if anybody's crazy enough to order this thing up, communication bands here, 4G LTE on those bands, 3G, 2G quad band. Okay, cool. You can see what's supported there. It has the fingerprint sensor on the front. All right, it's right in this location. It's, it's a pretty standard spot for a fingerprint. It, I mean, it works. It's pretty quick. What am I talking about? It's pretty quick. Okay, display specs are not gonna blow you away. It's a 5.2 inch screen that's made by Sharp and it's 1080p. Now, another thing they claim is that this glass, they claim this glass is indestructible, but it's not running like Gorilla Glass. It's some, it's called Asahi. It's some Japanese version of Gorilla Glass, I guess. Stock Android experience. So it's got a Snapdragon 625 in it and you're probably not purchasing it for the immediate hardware that comes in the box. Instead, you're looking at these guys right here. You want the custom feeling. You want the custom vibe. You can, you can put wood natively on your phone without a case. Let's get into the fun stuff, all right? I'm gonna go with the natural wood and the suede gray. DIY smartphone going on here. Ooh, that's actual, that's natural wood. Ooh, there we go. Tiny, subtle, nuance logo up there. And let's go, is this a bottom? This is a bottom, suede gray. Ooh, look, that's, oh! Oh, I've never seen a smartphone like that in my life. The suede on the bottom, the wood on the top, that's a first for me. Whoa, it's very soft. I'm having some positive feelings about this in general, at least the idea. Let's do another look. Ooh, look at that. Now that's really reminding me of the Nokia device now. Ooh, I like the dark wood. That's a, that's a design statement. These guys, they can't really go out and compete with the big dogs. So they, they had to take this kind of side angle, this sneaky approach. The real story is about the customization, about the fact that it can look exactly how you want it to look. There's over 600 variations and you can switch them out very easily. You could pick up one of these packs and all of a sudden it's like completely changed the look of your phone. So if you are gonna buy this, it's going to be for this purpose. This thing is not gonna blow the doors off the smartphone industry, but it's a cool little development and that's why I thought it would be interesting to you. Look at that right there with the wood and the yellow. Whatever you want, it's up to you. Take back control of your smartphone. All right, time for your favorite part of the video, the question and answer session. Today I've got a question from Luke Tyndale. Have you ever built a computer? I would think this would be kind of obvious seeing as how I've dedicated a huge chunk of my life to tech. But that said, it is mostly consumer electronics, smartphones, things like this. Yes, I've built many computers long before I ever shot a video and published it to YouTube, in fact. That's kind of how I got my start. I think like a lot of you out there, there's something so compelling about picking your components, getting the screwdriver out, up 
upgrading other aspects. Now, granted, the first few computers I had were not as configurable. Some of that early stuff was more embedded, and, and, and I was a kid, so I just didn't have as much money to deal with that, but as soon as I could convince my dad to let me go out and buy some components from the local computer store, I was building computers. I'll be there with a pen and a paper with the different specs. If I have this much to spend, what kind of graphics card am I gonna, I mean, I would do that for fun, and I'm sure many of you still do. I highly recommend maximum experimentation all the time. Open things up, figure them out. It's exciting. Who knows where it'll lead you? You will probably have a channel like this eventually. Here's a good one. What's your ideal beard, and do you want it bushy and full, or do you prefer it trimmed down? I like that question. I like the mid-range. In the winter, I'll let it get a little bushy. I play hockey. All right, now, if you watch any hockey, you know in the playoffs, the guys, they let the beard go a little bit. If it's colder outside, you turn into a bit of a lumberjack. It's okay. In the summer, it's a little hotter. I'll keep it slightly more trimmed. I don't really have a rule regarding this. I think you just know. For your face, when it's getting out of hand, you know. And then you toggle it down. All right, the third and final question for today from Brian Levy. Do you produce your own background music? Now, I have. I have done it before, but of course, we're publishing so much content practically every day here. I, I just want like a wide variety of music to choose from. So I work with a number of amazing music producers on SoundCloud that provide me with an abundance of stuff to pick from so I can stay inspired, especially while editing. When you when you throw a track onto a timeline when you're editing a video, it kind of, it brings a special life to it. It just makes it very exciting. Now granted, my background to a certain extent is musical. Like I was producing music, making music long before I had a YouTube channel. I had like a converted, a, a converted school portable that was acting as a music studio. I used to record bands. I mean, on some level, that's one of my major passions. I would love to spend more time doing it. Some of you know, I even put up a second channel where I thought I was gonna experiment with music a lot more than I have had a chance to. So hopefully I can find a way to balance out work, life, and music, and maybe I can I can make some more. Who knows, it's a lot of fun. It's very therapeutic. But then again, so is this channel. So there you have it, your questions have been answered. Remember, leave your questions in the comment section of this video here and you may make it into the next video. I wanna answer your questions, let's do it.